Hey there, fellow wackadoos. Hello again. Welcome back to Dr. Doodle's Cubasic Asylum, where, as always, the doctor is insane. So, yeah, hey, how's it going? Um, I guess we're at, uh, what, yeah, episode 23 now? QBA 23? Yeah, that's right. Uh, we're talking about FM synthesis or FM music. And uh, But, you know, a funny thing, the other day, my beautiful young bride and I, well, we were uh, scheduled to do some travel for work, and uh, among the other things she wanted me to do last minute, she wanted me to take out the garbage, so I did that. And, but then she cooked breakfast and put some stuff in the garbage, and then I had a couple other things. By the time we finally left, the garbage was full again. So she comes around me, she says, hey, I thought I told you to take out the garbage. I said, I did. This is fresh garbage. And she says, oh, you mean like your latest video? Anyway, so, on that note, got some fresh garbage for you. Yep, this is QBA uh, 23, and it's, um, yeah, from FM Music. Right, so here we go. Now, check this out. Uh, you've seen keyboard uh, programs probably before, like this one here. You just click the mouse, and there you go. But typically, it's just the play command in QBASIC that, um, you know, the beep, 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 boop, boop, boop. This is actually the sound card. We're, we got the sound card. And check out how we got four different waveforms we can do here, plus feedback on and off. So we can play this sound. Or this. Or this. They're all pretty similar, but you turn the feedback off and you got this. Or. So there you go, it's not just the, the computer, this is actually through the sound card, it's FM synthesis. You may have heard the uh, DOS games in the past, the da 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 music, whatever, but uh, that's, not, that's how they do it. Now this is a long way from the soundtrack of a video game, but it's basically the same idea, it's how to use FM synthesis on your sound card, and uh, we'll dive into that. But uh, yeah, here we go, hang on just a second. Alrighty, well, as you see here, we brought, uh, brought up QBA23.base, the QBasic Synthesizer by Dr. Doodle, copyleft2023. And uh, yeah, well, let's take a quick look how this run, how this goes. We'll start this, boop. So here we have our keyboard, and as you move the mouse, you see the cursor go around, blah, 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 blah. Click on a note, and guess what? You get a sound. But again, it's not just uh, the, the, not just the computer beep, boop, boop, and all that. Uh, this is actually from the sound card. And if you notice, we got, like, there's this sound. Next waveform. Another one. Here, and then. So we got the four different waveforms that the FM synth chips are, are able to, to, uh, to generate and then we got feedback on or off so we'll try the first one again Ooh, that's groovy a little that was a little quieter but it still sounds good and then yeah so we got eight different waveforms and in, in all that we can uh, play with here so now you've seen keyboard things uh, before probably with the mouse and you may be wondering now how do I with the, the keys here like there's a white one how do I like for example like this is well there's a D note this would be a D sharp and how do I know between the D and D sharp how does the computer know which whether I'm hitting the 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 natural key here or the the accidental the dark key there well I'm, I'm kind of happy with this trick that I came up I was worrying about this for a very long time till I figured out what you see here is actually two keyboards. You've got your chromatic keyboard and you got your diatonic or just natural keyboard. See? So it's actually two keyboards. They're just they look like one keyboard. So if I have the mouse above that point, it plays all the the chromatic keys, the naturals and the uh, accidentals, whereas below that it plays just the diatonic, just the natural notes, no sharps or flats. So that's how that works. Uh, we'll get to that later. But in any case, let's take a look at the code, see how it runs, and exit here. Boop, there we go. Now, here we are again, the QBA uh, 23 base QA6 synthesizer, but Dr. Doodle Q copy left 2023. Next line, we initialize our program, def int A through Z. Again, create, make all our variables uh, integer by default. We declare sub mouse, that we've seen that one many times, and now declare sub noise. This is the sub that actually plays the sound card, and you see it's got one parameter called pitch, or frequency pitch. Now we dim wave, wave zero, wave one, wave two, wave three. These are the, I'll show you, run. 
these are these images, the wave shapes you see on screen here. Uh, uh, they actually draw the different waves, save them in an array, and then, well, four different arrays, and then you display them later. So in any case, yeah, we, we dimension our, our wave arrays. Now, waveform equals zero to start. Feedback is off. Top secret shut up equals zero. We don't talk about this. Now we go sub, do screen, mouse one, noise equals zero. Zero just means silence. Shut up. Don't do nothing. Okay, and then we come to our main program. Well, right here. Let's take a look at do screen first. You've seen similar things here. The do screen basically just draws the screen. You'll see all the uh, we, screen 12. That's the, the, the screen mode, the graphics mode. That's uh, 320 by 200 pixels and 16 colors. Whoops. Quick correction here, uh, screen mode 12 is actually 640 by 480 pixels uh, with 16 colors, while 13 is 320 by 200, but 256 colors. Also, I'm sorry about the ridiculous ceiling fan noise. Literally didn't hear anything while I was recording, uh, so it must be some electrical interference or something. Okay, back to the video. Mouse 2, two turns the mouse off so we can go do our graphics without interference from the mouse cursor. We don't have lines or circles. We're just basically drawing the keys and this, all the waves and things like that. Uh, we locate print waveform, wave 0, 1, 2, and 3. And, and you'd think it'd be wave 1, 2, 3, and 4, but of course computers, they start with 0, 1, then 2, and 3. And put with preset, la, 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 feedback is off, exit. This is where we're just printing all the things on screen. Uh, you basically get the synthesizer with Dr. Doodle, draw the keyboard, and then if top secret shut up is not zero, look, I told you once, we don't talk about this. So anyway, we go to uh, 4Z equals zero to 300 step 140, and line, what is this here, uh, color one. Oh yeah, they were just drawing the keys here. Now we return, so that just does the screen, and there we go. We've, we've done the screen, we've turned the mouse cursor on so we can see it. Noise zero, so we're getting no sound. Now, here's our main program. Big thing here. Mouse three, of course, we're reading the mouse. Is there any keys pressed? Where is it? And we can do locate print one, two, or H horizontal and vertical if we need to. But I figured out where all the numbers are, so I just disabled that for the moment. Now, if B equals one, if, I've, if I press the key, then. If H is greater than 66 and H is less than 126 and V is greater than 56 and V is less than 86, then mouse 2 clear screen your system. In other words, if we're hovering over that quit button there, this position here, right here, then turn off the mouse, clear the screen, and system ends the program. If H is greater than 159, H is less than 245, so within the, the, the wave set there, uh, within the key, the control panel, I guess you'd say. If H is greater than 159 and H is less than 245, so it's within the control panel there, and V is greater than 95 degrees, less than 130, then go to the wave set. This is where we actually select which waveform we want to play. And we'll see that sub later. If H is uh, greater than 256 and H is less than 384. V is between 95 and 130, so the same line but over to the right here. Then go sub feed me. That's the feedback on and off. So in this position here, we're selecting what wave you want. Over here, it's, it's the feedback on and off. And if H is greater than 66, H is less than 550, and V is greater than 145, and V is less than 275, then if V is greater than 220 then go sub diatonic else go sub chromatic see re remember i told you earlier it's actually two different keyboards well if v is greater than 220 then we drop down to the diatonic keyboard else we go to the, the top which is the chromatic keyboard all right so what we're doing now is if we press the button we press mouse button we're detecting where is it on screen is it on the control panel is it on the top keyboard the bottom keyboard and it acts accordingly so that's all there is there. If B equals 3, then mouse 2 clears scene system. So if you hit pro press both keys, then it clears the screen, quits the program, and loop while in key, in key equals nothing. Mouse 2 turns off the keyboard, clears screen, and then system. So that's it for the, the, the main program. All it does really is it, it calls... Uh, that goes to wave set, feed me, or diatonic, or chromatic. So the, the first one here, that just that's the quit button there. It clears the screen. It, ends the program then you got the go sub or the wave set sub subroutine uh, feed me feedback subroutine diatonic and chromatic 
So let's take a look at these things here. We've seen the do screen here. It does all the artwork. La, 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 la. Now wave step. All right, so we uh, earlier up here we did, where is it? Yeah, okay. We, yeah, we, we did all our, our, we did our artwork there, the waves, this and that and everything. Now we get from this area to that area, wave zero, that's the first wave. Get here, wave one, get two, wave three. So this is where I actually get the wave shapes on the screen. Save them to rays called wave one, wave, wave zero, wave one, wave two, and wave, wave three. Now we use them here. We wave set, we turn off the mouse, put all four wave shapes on the screen there. P set is pixel set, meaning it's just the normal. Now we go to select case H, we're reading the position. Which one are we clicking on here? Uh, from case 157 to 77, we put the uh, wave zero preset. Instead of P set, it's preset. That makes it like negative. So when you click on it, it inverts that image. That's how you see it. it's different when you click on one. So between this, we wave zero preset and we set waveform to zero. If the cursor is from 178 to 198, so next one over, then we preset wave one. And waveform equals one. If it's further over yet, we preset wave two, waveform equals two. And if the finally, if we're over the fourth wave, we preset or reset the last image and waveform equals three. So all it does, it prints all the, the waves regular as they normally would be. Then it selects where the, the mouse is. If it happens to be over the first, wave shape then it presets or reverses the first wave shape sets the waveform to zero if it happens to be over the second then it sets the wave one waveform equals one etc now we turn the mouse back on do mouse three loop until p equals zero that just basically waits until you release the mouse button so there's no interference or anything else and return that's all there is for wave set feed me the feedback is similar we set our color to 14, mouse 2, turn off the mouse. Now this is interesting, feedback equals 12 minus feedback. This is a toggle, we've seen these in the past. And basically, this feedback value will either be 12 or 0. So if feedback has to be 0, then it sets feedback to 12 minus 0, or 12. Next time you come around, feedback is 12, so it sets it to 12 minus 12 minus feedback. Now it goes back to zero. So every time this line is called, it clicks it on off. It, it just toggles, hence the name. So if feedback equals 12, then locate and print on, else locate, print off. Uh, do mouse three, loop until B equals zero. Now again, we're just looping until you release the mouse key, so, but it doesn't keep clicking back and forth. Then return. So this one just turns the feedback on and off. And you'll see where we use this feedback variable later. Next we have the chromatic uh, subroutine here. This is the actual keyboard where it selects case H. At this point, you've clicked on one of the keys. Now, if it's from 70 to 84, then noise one, that's the first pitch, or a C. If it's 85 to 94, then noise two, C sharp. Next one over is noise three, it's D, so C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We're just checking the location, <coughs> the horizontal location of the mouse and depending which key you are, you are over, it plays the appropriate note. Noise one, noise two, noise three, etc. Let's cruise, cruise down here, da 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 Do mouse equals three, loop while B equals one. And again, this just, it doesn't keep, da 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 da, it just, it waits until you release the mouse, then it can do what goes back to the main program. Next, diatonic, same thing, we select case H, only you'll see C, D, E, F, no sharps, no flats. So basically this is just the lower half of the keyboard there. And depending which key you're on, it plays noise, noise 10 or 17 or 25, whatever. Da, 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 da. And do mouse three, loop while B equals one. Wait until you re release the key and there you go. So that's basically the main program, or the, yeah, the, the main program. You've got, you set up your, your variables and everything else. We do a do screen here that draws all the artwork, saves it into arrays, etc., etc. Now we go to the main program and it just selects if B is one, well then where is it? Is it over the quit button? Mouse to clear screen and system. If it's over the wave set area with the four waveforms, then you go to a wave set to select which waveform you want to hear. Also, if it's over the, the feedback, feed me, it goes to the feedback routine and selects with the, turns the feedback on and off. And then finally, if it's on the actual keyboard, 
we check whether we're at the top part or the second part, and then we either go subdiatonic or chromatic. So, what's left, view, subs, and mouse. We've seen this many times, different programs. Again, it just, you, know, you got your three parameters. Mouse one displays the mouse cursor, mouse two hides the mouse cursor, and mouse three reads the buttons and where it is. Now, view, subs, noise. And here is where the nitty gets gritty. Now you'll see a lot of you'll see a lot of code here, and it looks kind of daunting. But this here is just setting up very, various uh, parameters and the frequency, octave, etc. Well, let's take a list, look at this line by line. So again, def int a through z. And we're just setting the variables to integer by default. There's our sub declaration noise pitch. That's the number you, you, that tells which note are we going to play. So we've got to noise, pitch, and then shared waveform. Remember, waveform feedback, those are on the control panel that we select our waveform, we select feedback. So these are shared between this routine and the main program, so you don't have to put it in as a parameter. Now, we set the values for the bass address, and just like with uh, digital audio, we have to know where the sound card is. It's usually at uh, address... 220 hex, but some different systems, you may have a printer on that. You may have a scanner on that address, so you change the 220A, 220B, whatever. So here, if this doesn't work, you can try setting the 222, 220B, whatever your sound card happens to be set for, remember? So because this is, we don't know, I don't know what, what system you're running this on, but if your sound card is set for 220, not a problem. If it's anything else, just change that to 221, 222, etc. So we set the values for the base address, in this case is 220A, the register address is base address plus 8, and the data address is the base address plus 9. Okay, so out RA, the way that the, you access the, uh, this is interesting here, this here, this is a text called SB Pro, which I'll leave a link to, and I have to give a shout out to, uh, to Jeffrey S. Lee, this is copyright, copyright 1991 by Jeffrey S. Lee. This this is uh, it really helpful here. And the, the, the jargon in here can be kind of daunting, but it gives you the idea what the operators are, what they do, etc., etc., what the very various registers. Now, these are registers on the sound card, not on the mouse. And what they do here, you can see these are the approximations of the wave shapes right there and using X key text. But the idea is the way that you interface with FM synthesis on the sound card is you select a register and then you send data to it. So we've set our base register and data addresses and now we, we access the sound card using out commands. For example, out RA1. This is It's asking what register do you want to access, in this case 1, and we send the data 20 to that register 1. That enables the waveform select. So you can select which waveform you want. Now for we set out register H E O, what's that in I don't know in decimal, but that's hexadecimal E O, E zero. We send the data waveform. Now this is the it's either zero, one, two, or three, and that's the waveform that we selected earlier. So we're selecting register H. Um, we're selecting register E zero hex, and we're sending the waveform either zero, one, two, three, or four. So we select the waveform. Now if you notice here, out register. E3 instead of E0, uh, uh, we're sending the same waveform. Now, why are we doubling up here, sending select waveform, select waveform to do different registers? Reason is the way FM works, it uses two, uh, they call them operators in, in frequency modulation. I guess electronics, they'd call them oscillators or just a tone source. And the thing is, the one operator modulates the other operator. That's what gives you the complex waveforms of different shapes and different sounds and things like that. Now, for each, for each uh, parameter, whether it's the, the waveform, the, the tact decay rate, the level, the key on, key off, there are two operators working. Otherwise, it wouldn't be FM. There'd be nothing to modulate the frequency. So the first operator is always whatever register zero. The next operator is whatever ever register three. So notice four zero, four three, six zero, six three. 6, 3. 8083. That's all that's happening there. We're sending our parameters to the first operator and then the same parameter to the second operator. So what are our parameters? Well, we've set our volume to 12. You can play with that if you want. I just like 12 sounds the best on this particular sound card. 
So we send out register 40, uh, we send the, the, the volume. Basically it's key scaling or operator one or operator two. Now this is interesting, I don't know why it's set up this way. Why they decided to design the sound card this way, I don't know, but your valid values for, for volume are 0 to 31 and lower values give her higher volume instead of the other way around. I don't know why they decided to do it that way, but that's the way it is. So a zero will be maximum volume, 31 will be silence. But in any case, we are going home here. We're sending to register 40. This is the register that controls the volume of the particular operator. And we're sending the volume, the volume which we want 12 in this case. So 12 from, from zero, 12 up, put it that way. And now for so the second operator, same thing, we send the volume, okay? So we set up our volume for both operators. Next we come down and we set our attack and decay rate. So how quickly, does the note fade in and then fade out or is it abruptly start, abruptly stop? And this is how, where we set it up. We go to register 60, the data, we send out data E4, which happens to be well, it's a quick attack. You heard, dunk, dunk, dunk. when you hit the, the note, it immediately, bang, bang, bang. Quick attack. And then, again, so the second operator, 6-3, E4, we set our attack and decay accordingly. Now we come down here. Here's our sustain and release rate, so the level that it sustains at, and the, how quickly, like when you release the note, does it stop instantly? It just kind of fade out. Well, for this, we sent to register 80, 80, that's, again, hexadecimal, and out data, it's 9D. And then H83, that's the second operator, same value. So the, the parameters set both for the first and second operator, they're set the same. Next, we got uh, the frequency, octave and the frequency, and B3, sorry, register B0, that's for the key on, key, which, that's all we really care about here, uh, key on or off. Are we playing a note? Are we not playing a note? Same for the second operator. And now finally, uh, register C0, that's the feedback. We select the feedback operator. And if you remember, that's either 12 or 0 in this program. You can fuss around with different values, see which I like 12. Any more than that, I think it's a little too much feedback, but in any case, so we set to the first operator, and then the second operator, we either, either send 12 or 0. Now, here's where the nitty gets gritty. Select case pitch, and this is, we send the, when we call the, the noise sub-procedure, what happens is you send it a pitch. Zero for, for zero frequency, silence. Case one is the lowest note, which is C. Case two is uh, C sharp and then D, D sharp, E, etc., etc. So basically, it's the, looking at what pitch you sent to it. Then it sets the frequency accordingly, sets the octave accordingly. Because if you notice, we start at 120, we go down, 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 down back here to the 120. That's because we've gone through the 12 notes. Now it's the same note again, but an octave higher. And instead of 48, it's 52. We're adding four. Why four? Why not just one? Again, who knows, that's just the way it works. This information can be found again, and I will send a link to this, this document here. It's, it's kind of technical, you gotta read through it a few times, but it does explain how this all works. So that's pretty much it for the, the pitch, yes. And now, we've selected our frequency, we've selected our octave, now finally, out, register A, A0, the frequency. Out, register B, the octave, and it plays the note. So let's review this here. Sub noise pitch. Again, we're sending it a pitch, a number, so we know which key was we want to play. Shared waveform and feedback. That's how we, we determine what waveform we want, what feedback, whether there's feedback or not. And now we've set the values for the base address, register, and data address. Again, depending where your sound card is set up in your system, it's usually at 220 hex. Now we, we send to register one, uh, this this number here, tw two zero in hex, that enables the waveform select. And now we go to uh, register E zero and send the waveform again. E three, send the waveform again. That's the first and the second operator. Come down to the next parameter. This is the volume, of course. We talked about how zero would be maximum volume, thirty one would be zero, would be nothing, silence. Now for registers 4-0, that's the first operator, we send our value, which happens to be 12. 
A 4.3 is the second operator, we send the volume again. We come down here to register 60, and this 60, excuse me, and hex. Now that's the attack and the decay rate, and this number here tells it you want a quick attack, a slow attack, a quick or, or decay, slow decay. We do the same thing for the second operator. Now we out register 80, and that's uh, the sustain level and release rate. Like after, we would, I don't know if you've ever heard of ADSR or attack, decay, sustain, release. These are the envelope, the volume envelope in the note. So attack, again, if it's a sharp attack, a quick attack, it's just boom, the minute you hit the key, you hear the sound. If it's a slow attack, it builds up like a violin, building it louder. And decay, now what happens after the first, the first attack there, it decays a little bit to some level that you set. Either half the volume, a quarter, three quarters, or full volume. And this is where you set what, de what decay it is. So after the bing, it holds it some, some volume. Next we got the sustain, uh, oh sorry, sorry, decay, how quickly does it decay? And then sustain, that's the level that it holds. As long as you hold that key, it's at that level. Then release, once you release the key, does it stop abruptly or does it kind of fade out slowly? So that's the attack, decay, sustain, release. And we set these parameters here. Next we come to uh, register B0, and that's the key on, key off, octave and frequency. And basically we're just sending zero to both registers so it's silence until we're ready to play a note. Now finally we go to C0 and C3. That's the feedback, it's either a 12 or zero. And for the first operator, second operator, we select the feedback and there you have it. Now we go and select case pitch. That's the parameter you send to it. If it's case zero, well the frequency is zero, octave zero, nothing, it's silence. Case one, that's the, what, the C, and that will be the frequency 120, octave 48. Uh, next would be 2 is C sharp, and then D, D sharp, E, etc. All of, basically, it just looks at whatever note you send to it. That's the pitch you want to play, the frequency you want. So we start with frequency 120, 127, and don't worry about these numbers. We go up to uh, 224, then back to 120 because it's a C again, but the octave goes up one. So here we're setting our frequency and octave. Once we've gone all through that, we know what frequency we want, we know what octave. So we send out register A0, we send the frequency, and then out register B0, we send the octave. Boom. All you need to do is call send call noise, some procedure with the pitch parameter. What note do you want to play? Zero for nothing or any other note. Now it'll pick up the waveform and feedback because that's shared between the main program and here. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, I know it's a lot to, a lot to take in into one one setting here, but just you know, watch the, the video a couple times. And like I say, I will send a link to this this document. This will explain a lot more than I can here. But uh, wow, just watch the video a few times if you need to, and eventually it should. Or just use it as is. You don't have to know any of this stuff. But if you want to, send different values here. You know, change the attack, change the sustain, or the frequency oc oscillator. Uh, see what, what the effect is. How much feedback is it? A lot, a little, how much volume, uh, a slow sustain, whatever. These are all things that, uh, I mean, I could put all these controls. Uh, here, let's run this here. I could add controls for the, the attack, the sustain, the delay, the release. And then you, it would be page after page of code. You wouldn't want to sit through all that. But this is the basic idea. It's a it's FM synthesis, Cubasic synthesizer. So you can select one of four waveforms, feedback or not, and you get different sounds. As you hear, uh, I like this waveform here with no feedback. And uh, with a little practice, you can play. play. <laughs> almost had it you get the idea now in future programs you may want to have a, a recorder so it records each note you play then you can sequence it play it back automatically but that's way beyond anything 
just too much. For now, enjoy the keyboard and play with the, the waveforms, feedback on or off. And we're done here, so exit, boop, that's pretty much it. Now I guess all that's left, hi, right, in there, how you doing? Uh, I guess all that's left now is, um, well, the <laughs> superiors. Well, we got a good one this time, you'll like this. So we'll do the superiors, we'll come back for a wrap up and send you on your way and you can make all the music you want. So there you have it. Hang on one second, we'll go to the superiors. Superior. All right, gang. Well, here we are at the YouTube channel Smarter Every Day, and uh, the host there, a gentleman by the name of Destin, he's uh, <laughs> well, he makes me smarter every day. I'll tell you that. It, it, similar to technology connections, I don't look for anything particular. I just come here and get blown away. The, he just has the coolest things. Oh, Prince Rupert's drops. I don't know if you've seen these things, but they're amazing. They're, they're all over YouTube, but uh, it, basically they, they drop some hot glass into water and it creates a very special uh, a bubble type thing that's almost, you can hit it with a hammer, it doesn't break. Yet you, you, you smash the tail and it just explodes. You gotta see, that video is cool. Uh, but here's, now here's uh, uh, Kodak at Rochester, my hometown, we're born and raised, and uh, how Kodak makes film, and wow, it's just incredible stuff. Now, this is interesting, too. I saw this one. Uh, it says, it looks stupid, but it's actually genius. This is the zigzag Coast Guard search pattern, and he explains, watch that one. This is interesting. He explains how and why they they do that pattern. You'd think they'd just go in a square or something, but it really doesn't make sense. What's this? Uh, here's a, a gong with a hit with a baseball bat at 11... Thousand and miles per hour, or eleven hundred miles an hour. Oh, here's the James Webb Space Telescope. How that works. Um, there's more about film. What else is he got? He's got so many cool things. What was the one I was watching the other day that was really cool? Uh, uh, I saw something about four-stroke engines. That was oh, nuclear submarine. He boarded. A, now I remember watching one of his videos. Uh, oh, that was the one where they actually made two bullets collide in midair. That was fascinating. You have to see that because apparently during the Civil War, two bullets actually collided in midair, and they they reproduced that uh, the experiment there. So it was pretty amazing. But just wow, a slow motion weed eater. That that be. Oh look at check it out wrapped around the fence. But there's. Oh, and this one, this one of the first ones, in fact, maybe the first one I saw about snatch blocks or block and tackle. And it's just, I've always been fascinated with block and tackles, how that works. And he does such a great ex explanation of how that works and how, why. Uh, oscilloscopes, I happen to have a couple of oscilloscopes, but I've never done anything in, as advanced as this. So uh, that's a lot of fun to watch. And yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where to start. Like I say, there's just so much cool stuff. The Fourier series, I've, I've seen this a couple of times. He has a great ex explanation of how that all works. Has to do with wave shapes and sine waves and everything else. Yeah, Destin here, he's, uh, he, he was, uh, I believe, he, did he work on a nuclear sub or a nuclear engineer, something like that. But he, this man knows what he's doing. He's, he's well educated and it's just the amazing things he does. Uh, what is this? Uh, where did that one go that I was watching? Um, no. Maybe it's the next page. He's got hundreds of, of cool videos. Oh, the Rocket Factory. That's kind of cool. I like that one, too. Uh, but you just have to come check this. Show how to make pizza on a nuclear submarine. Uh, wouldn't it just be like regular pizza, I guess? Well, I'll have to watch it and find out. But, yeah, he's just got the coolest stuff. Destin there, He, he he's the host, and he... It comes up it, very similar to technology connections. It's just random stuff, but just so fascinating and interesting. And he, he does such a great, uh, he covers it all and uh, how Germans measure milliseconds mechanically. That one was cool. I remember seeing that a while ago too. So you have to come. You got to check out Smarter Every Day. I guarantee you'll enjoy. I mean, you'll be blown away. It's so such cool stuff. It's uh, you can spend hours here and never get bored. Just such cool things. Thank you, Destin, for your hard work. There, there it is. The 160 years later, uh, they that hitting two bullets in slow motion. That's just amazing, and you you have to see that one. If nothing else, watch that one. But it's just such crazy stuff on here. There's the Prince Rupert's drop, and <clears throat> does uh, smarter every day. Go say hello to Destin. Give him some love, and uh, wow, the. 
you will not be disappointed. I, I guarantee you that. So check them out and then have a good time. And anyway, I guess that's about it for, for Dustin. So back to the video and we'll see you shortly. Hang on. Ah. Ah. Ah, I knew I'd get it. All right, kiddies. Well, so we've seen what the program does. We've seen how it does it. And uh, it's a lot to absorb. But just to, if you need to, watch the video a couple times. Zip through my stupid humor <laughs> if you can tolerate it. But, yeah, we, we've seen the program. We went over and visited Dustin at Smarter Every Day. And that, that page really will make you smarter every day. Incredible stuff he's got over there. I, you got to check him out. It's great, great stuff. Uh... That's about all I've got for now, but yeah, as, as always, comment, leave questions if you have any, uh, let me know how I'm doing. Uh, but also, I, I've been wondering, does anyone actually download and try this code? If you've done so, I'd like to know how it works for you, what do you think of it? Uh, please, well, I guess maybe I don't want to know what you think of it, but in any case, try it, have fun, send me whatever cheers and jeers you want to, uh, until then, have a good time, enjoy your life, and don't listen to this old fool, just do what you want. So later, hasta la pizza, baby.